Greetings Clarifiles and Clarifilettes. As promised, I'm going to do this video showing you how to make these little tools right here. There's one, there's another, we've got a whole bunch of them as I showed in the last video. A bunch of them, different sizes, different shapes for different reasons and all that. So, uh, and uh, what are the different reasons? Well, the different reasons are really determined by you, by usage. You experiment and you find the right tool for the right job. And there are, you know, more than one job on uh, reeds, working on reeds. But these are primarily, I'd say almost wholly, for finishing, fine finishing the tip area. Now, someone asked the question, a reasonable question, uh, about what abrasives to use. Well, uh, there are different brands of abrasives. The ones I've always found best are made by Norton. Uh, now, Norton is, uh, I think, a Canadian company. Uh, but anyway, uh, they have one, the Bear Manning Toughback, Norton, uh, I think it's Norton Toughback. And uh, there's also a German company that produces uh, very nice abrasives in all kinds of different uh, grades. Uh, but the important thing, the important thing is that the abrasive be wet dry. That's really essential. I've, I've got some wet dry abrasive here in my desk uh, from another company. I can't really quite determine what company it is, but it's wet dry abrasive and it's very good. Uh, and I got it from Amazon. Where do you get anything anymore, right? Um, so uh, anyway, uh, but uh, what I'm using for finishing the tip, uh, and it depends, again, like uh, how heavy the reed is, how much material I want to take off. Uh, I will use these, make these, uh, these tools in uh, 320, uh, make them in 400, and then also uh, make them in 600 if you want to do really fine, fine finishing up in that area that I worked on the previous video. And this really works, folks. So now I'm going to show you, this is the Sugru, as you can see right there, Sugru. Well, it's not quite in focus, but you get the idea. Sugru, there we go. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to be really cool, like lots cooler than an old fogey like me, uh, they, they make these things in all kinds of different colors. And it's a really, it's a really great product. And I'm going to show you how to make these tools, and it's ridiculously easy. So uh, I've wasted enough of your time talking about this. Uh, so let's go right down and right down to the surface here, so you can see exactly what's going on and how to make this. Okay, so we're down here on the surface, and. Um, I'm going to show you uh, how to make this tool, but uh, there's, you know, there's kind of a segment of all the different little tools that I've made. They're really cool, and they're all for different reasons. Uh, this one, you can actually go over uh, and finish the reed uh, over the tip because I created it so uh, it's rounded here. I'm sorry, I'm getting out of frame, uh, so it's rounded here. And uh, that works uh, pretty well, but still, uh, uh, this guy right here, this is the guy that actually rules when you want to work toward fr uh, from the tip toward the back. Okay, so enough of these guys. Let's take a look at what we've got here. First, you're going to see, um, I've just got a regular old generic mouthpiece patch. Now, you can choose to do this however you like, but I prefer to actually shape the mouthpiece patch to what I want it to be before I actually do anything with the Sugru. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of scissors here, and I'm going to cut the mouthpiece patch um, probably right about there 
Come on, scissors don't fail me. All right, well, that's not very straight. Okay. Okay, so uh, there we go. That's uh, cut like that. And um, let me move in here even further. So I'm not going to be out of frame. So now I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to shape it about like that. And as you can see, I've got, I'm going to try to do this as symmetrically as I can. And I usually, I'm a little off at this, but it's not, it's not critical. It's, it's a nicety, but it's not a necessity to have it perfectly symmetrical. Because you're going to make the adjustment yourself. Okay. Well... That's not absolutely horrible, but I'm kind of nutty about, you know, symmetry. And so uh, I want to get that off. Well, that's not great. And see if I can get this a little more parallel. And that's better. Okay. All right. Still... All right, well, here's, this is, uh, sorry, I'm just being finicky, but, all right. There we go. So there's, there's my uh, little item you can see right there. Okay, sorry, I did a little shift here, so. I think you'll have a little better perspective at seeing this. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take an abrasive grade. Now in this case, I'm actually taking, uh, this is uh, 400, I think. And you can see that's tough back. Um, so then it's a Norton, Norton product. Uh, just don't go down at, and get just a regular abrasive uh, at your, your local whatever because it's not likely that it's going to work well for you. Uh, it's got to be wet dry for sure. Uh, I can't remember exactly the name of the other abrasive. It's from the German company, but it's also very good. Now, as you can see, I've just taken my mouthpiece patch. And uh, you'll note I'm not actually um, going to put it on a mouthpiece. I'm going to actually put it on the non-abrasive side of the abrasive. Okay. Now, um, the idea here is... Um, to then cut the abrasive, cut the excess part of the abrasives away. Okay, so this is really this is like a kindergarten, right? I mean, you know, you're and we're, it's going to be get more like kindergarten as you uh, as we progress. Um, Okay, now I've got a razor blade here, and I'm going to try to do this um, do this cut here. like that. We're not looking at something that's going to have to be like super, super accurate. Uh, if it were, it certainly wouldn't be something I could, uh, I could do. Uh, so, uh, all right. So now we've got our abrasive. Top part is the mouthpiece, mouthpiece patch. The bottom part is the abrasive. 
Uh, let's see if I can clean up that top part. This is a little bitty little straggler there. And we'll get that guy. Good. All right. Come on. There we go. All right. That's sort of looking decent. All right. And um, all right. So now what do we do next? Well, this is where the Sugru comes in. Now, like any old fogey, I'm using black. But, you know, I may get a little kind of, you know, second childhood. I may order something like a little colorful. Maybe the the uh, blue and orange Astros colors. Yeah, there we go. Well, I can't wait till baseball season comes back in. Now, this stuff will go bad on you um, in a short amount of time. And I, I'm not talking about 10 minutes. or I'm talking about you know, 30 minutes, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking about an hour, two hours. Um, so you have to begin to work with it a little quickly. You can't tarry because, it, and also the packages have a shelf life. So, so what am I going to do here? Well, I've actually got the foundation of my finishing tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, a patch of this. I could make several tools with this, just this amount right here. And, uh, okay, so I'm going to take, I may need a little more than this, but what I'm going to need for this more than anything uh, is a handle and, and I might choose to do a little more so uh, here we are again in grade school kindergarten actually we haven't made it advanced up there to the first grade quite yet and so I'm going to take and this is just like play-doh okay so you can roll it and so I'm going to make a little, yeah, something like that. It doesn't have to be anything fantastic. And you're going to be amazed at how easy this is. And now I'm going to take this little guy. I'm going to put it right here. Try to center it a little bit on the tool. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Not that there's anything wrong with perfect. Okay, let's see. And. Okay, now. So now I've got something that looks like that. It looks like kind of a stingray with, sting with a fat tail. All right, so let's see if we can make that a little better. You can't, this will wash out on, by the way, on your fingers. So I'm going to turn this guy up and make a kind of a fancy handle. It's sticky. It's a little sticky. Now, so this handle is going to fall, as you can see. So normally what I do is I would uh, take this and uh, say take my, my little bowl right here and I would set this up like that. And for all practical purposes, unless I want to be real picky about, oh, it's just not completely symmetrical on there. Okay. I'm compulsive about this. All right. So, so essentially, we're done. So there you go. 
in um, probably about a little over between 12 and 24 hours this is going to be this is going to be a great tool and then um, you're not stuck with what you've got see here's one that I made that's uh, it's got just a little handle that's all you need just a little tiny handle a way to control it here's one that I made and you can see it's all hacked up here because after I finished it I just took some scissors I could have taken razor blades or whatever and fashioned the handle but this one actually doesn't have any abrasive on it right at this point um, this is one I made before I decided to use mouthpiece patches so this one is shaped uh, it's just shaped by me <laughs> that's all this is not a mouthpiece patch this is actually a foundation of Sugru the prop the reason I don't just use the Sugru is because the Sugru right here is really sticky stuff okay it's called moldable glue and uh, and it really is so uh, I thought well um, once I get the Sugru down there I really don't want to to uh, you know don't want to destroy want a nice flat surface so what to do well uh, here we go uh, mouthpiece patches to the rescue all right so now once this uh, once this guy right here is done once it's cured it's going to be absolutely steady stable and it's really not glue see here's one I made with a big fat handle there you go this guy needs some ketogenic eating all right but it's good it's a, it's a very nice uh, feel for the hand but you can make all kinds of these and I'm going to try to make several of them after this video is over so I don't end up wasting this now you can use you can make all kinds of things with this you know uh, shape it and form it into anything it's a great company. Uh, try to get the Sugru, uh, your color of choice. It'll be really cool. That's what I'd really love to see is some of you guys write and show the colors. If you want to write me on our business email at sales at riddenairclarinetproducts.com, then I'd love to see the different colors that you come up with. And um, let me advise you to make several of them. You can see with this Sugru here, you could make several of these and uh, make them, uh, you know, with all different abrasives, different abrasive strengths. And uh, you're going to have something really cool to work with. And uh, by the way, when you're working with this, um, you're always, um, you get this over here, you're always uh, taking the abrasive and dipping it in water. So you're working on the tip of the reed when it's wet and that's another really cool thing this is a this is a cool tool right here it's really really far out um, I like this one and you can see it's got that got a different fat handle and all that so uh, just you can let your imagination run wild um, and just produce anything you want here's one with a big long handle that's very good I like to use this one a lot so I have plenty of control over the item. It's uh, really pretty far out. And uh, as you can see, the stuff collects. But this abrasive now, this wet dry abrasive, the Norton um, and uh, the German company will come to me in. But anyway, it's a very uh, good abrasive too. Um, or you can just get wet dry abrasive, you know, on Amazon. Uh, and they'll deliver a ton of it to you in different uh, grades. I would say that, uh, you know, at the very least, you need um, you need some 320 wet-dry, and you need some 400 wet-dry. And uh, that should suffice. And then if you want to really fine finish the tip, you could use 600, but all uh, wet-dry, of course. And so that's, there's your product right there, Norton tough back it's a uh, super stuff and you will like it okay so that's uh, that's all I've got for you and uh, this is a, you're gonna have a lots of fun working with this 
if you have kids, get them to roll out the stuff yourself while you're practicing, all right? Get the little guys to earn their keep. There we go, Sugro and the uh, proper abrasives to use. I would say, again, make several. And of course, your rubber clarinet patches, most clarinet players, we're gonna have rubber mouthpiece patches. <coughs> and um, with about three patches, I'd say, or maybe even two, depending on how big the patches are, uh, you can make these and it's, it's gonna be gonna be really cool. And you'll be able to apply those things that I did in the previous video to make the tips of your reeds really play perfectly. And you'll be amazed at how well the reed's going to play just by working the last maybe 10 millimeters to the tip, maybe blending into the last 15 millimeters up into the tip, but depending on the strength of the reed. But you have to use that. This is judgment. You have to make that judgment yourselves. And the way you make that judgment is by making mistakes and, and then correcting those mistakes in the actual process. This is, this is not like a strict formula, right? This is, like a, this is like learning to ride a bicycle. There's only so much someone can tell you. And then the rest of it, you're going to have to figure it out for yourself as part of the process, you know? And, you know, you start with a certain standard, like try not to fall over. <laughs> 